says, you see, folks, they always have to give public notice, and, and we consent by our silence. Here on, on the police cars, it says, deeds speak. The, the enforcement system is giving public notice that deeds, which we now know are actions, speak louder than words. So when a deed is dishonored, it is actually it's a grave dishonor. And it's a grave dishonor that's done uh, by the agents not following up the chain of command. And as such is a lawful and legitimate damage and injury against your trust. So again, is uh, when, when you see that uh, it's returned with some kind of notice of rejection, you now have absolute proof positive and forensic evidence of that dishonor. So if something is actually, if a, a deed poll is rejected on health grounds, uh, let's have a look at that. Because again, is you're giving sacred life to a document. It is your proof. It is your lawful remedy to prove that you are alive and they must, must, by ecclesiastical power, either dissolve the Sesta KV trusts or lose and be stripped of their ecclesiastical authority. So the effect would be all ecclesiastical deeds must have the blood signature protected by clear plastic tape so there is no possible health risk. Furthermore, under Section 3.412, the Uniform Commercial Code provides that no person is liable on an instrument unless his signature appears thereon. UCC defines the term signature as any name, trade name, assumed name, word, or other identifying mark used in lieu of a signature. Uh, and that's uh, Section 3. Uh, so that would be Article 3 of UCC, uh, Section 4012. The term signed is defined by the UCC as any symbol executed or adopted by a party with the present intention of authenticating a writing, which is uh, one dash 201 uh, subsection 39 thus commercial instruments such as checks and promissory notes may be signed by affixing any symbol that an individual intends to represent as his signature the reason these laws permit blood splotches as valid signatures is because this is the technique used to claim in certain jurisdictions that babies have signed their own certificates of birth because when we look back to a, a live born, uh, or sorry, a, a live uh, birth, which is the uh, uh, the original document that was created in the Roman system, they use a drop of blood and uh, usually also a footprint of the uh, the baby's uh, footprint, usually in black, to signify uh, that the baby is stillborn thus rolling over into probate in stillborn dead estates of Sesta KV. Uh, so the action <clears throat> uh, to that would be when a Roman agent refuses to follow their own rules, then you must have proof of their dishonor. This kind of rejection is most likely to occur at a face-to-face -face presentment. If it does occur, you have the right to make an immediate uh, appeal on a matter of law as refusal to accept your deed and signature when no health issue exists as a deliberate and clear breach of their own international rules. So uh, when you have a deed poll uh, that's returned with an attack notice, let's have a look at the effect of that. It may occur in some jurisdictions where bar members are particularly weak in knowledge of their own laws and they may seek to intimidate the sender by claiming they have committed a crime in sending the deed poll. When a deed poll is returned with some notice of rejection, then the Roman agent has provided proof of their dishonor. First, the action would be to ensure that appropriate copies 
photographs and scans of the proof of dishonor are made and then may be attached to any UCC filing as evidence of the dishonor. If an ecclesiastical deed poll has been ignored, the next step will be the service of a deed of ecclesiastical dishonor. Use the latest demand notice as the basis for transmitting the ecclesiastical deed of dishonor. And again, is uh, we over the next seven days, we we, put, uh, we hope to have these up and uh, running and uh, ready. Uh, also, uh, we'd like to uh, briefly, quickly talk a little bit about auto automation. We're a little bit out of time uh, for for some other topics. Uh, I know we're going to get to questions and answers in another uh, nine minutes or so. Uh, but for now, is really understand that. Uh, you see, it's it's the action and the essence of taking your own responsibility and competence back into your life is the essence of, of the exercise of the models that are being presented to you. There will always be those on the path that want to sell you something. But you see, when we actually start to take the reaction of the responsibility into our own life, to be able to stand with confidence, because one of the things is, well, we're all over the world. Uh, we're all divided. Not anymore. There's the covenant of one heaven. you literally have at your disposal the entire spiritual united realms now of heaven and hell. Again, heaven and hell. That might scare some people, but there's reasons for that. Frank's gone into them. Now, that's a pretty mighty force when you see that the apostolic administrators are essentially the archangels and the apostolic enforcers are the archdemons. We start to see that the very covenants that the ones who are delinquent, who have mental illness, have broken their own covenants. And therefore, the blood oaths that they made to their demons, they're now in dishonor with. So, from the essence of a new beginning where the controversy has been taken away. It's time to end the wars on earth because the wars in heaven are over. And we can start to actually use these competent tools to start our own communities and, and take our own responsibility to stand up in action because one of the biggest things, and I'm, I've been guilty of it too, we all have, and that's fence-sitting. When I was a little boy, I, I, uh, there was two movies <laughs> that, and I, I just have to w let you know, is uh, I grew up in Scotland. So when I was a little boy uh, growing up in Scotland, there was, there was only three channels. There was... Uh, it was BBC One, BBC Two, and BBC Three. So, uh, as you can uh, imagine, the the state programming was very strict. But nonetheless, is they they used to show a lot of the old classic movies, and uh, two movies that stuck with me when I was a little uh, uh, boy was one was the uh, that that old movie uh, uh, Samson and Delilah where it's like uh, they've done all kinds of things to, uh, to Samson, uh, and, and eventually it was, uh, even though they've blinded him, is, uh, he manages to return to get his strength back enough to uh, tear down the pillars, so to speak, of false justice. Well, that, that movie stuck in me, and, and, and obviously for a reason, and sort of another one... Um, with uh, with with uh, a, a, an actor, Mr. Curtis, I believe his name was, uh, and that was the movie Spartacus. 
Now, interesting enough, I think they've re- uh, made a remake of Spartacus, but there's an essence in the story of Spartacus that rings true. Uh, uh, and when I saw that when I was a kid, I was in awe because it showed the spirit of cooperation where, where in the face of insurmountable odds against an undefeatable enemy, you have absolute selfless act where one person says that, okay, for the, for the need of the entire group, we'll spare you all if, if you give up Spartacus. And if Spartacus is about to, you know, go to his death, some other guy stands up and says, I'm Spartacus. And then another stands up and says, I'm Spartacus. And so on and so on. And you see, I mention this story from my childhood for a reason. And it's a reason why it's, it's stuck with me for, uh, for over 40 years. And that's, we're facing that now. We're facing the division within our own families, where we have family members we estrange, where we have children that uh, were separated because of culture, cultura, of the attack on your children's water and health and, and frequency through the music they, that they choose. We, we see that in the essence of standing up and taking our own responsibility as we stand up and take the responsibility for our families and get our families involved. Because what we need to do now is we need to go to clans. We need to take things to the, the, the level of get organized within your own families because truly that's the essence of your origins and that's where they got everybody uh, before was by erasing the origins of everybody's history was they created the peoples that were beaten into submission and debt slavery. Um, Terry, I'm, uh, I'm just about uh, done for, uh, for, for the EDP. I, was, uh, I wanted to know if we could go on to maybe some, uh, some Q&A. Okay, let me check real quick here. Um, if I could remind everyone uh, on the phone, if you would star eight, put yourself in the question queue. That will help me get you unmuted in the order so you, we can ask the, uh, your question. And you can ask your question. We do have one from the chat, uh, Brian. Sure. Uh, the question is, Brian, you said that silence is dishonor. What should we do when the police try to read the right uh, to be silenced and say anything you say can be held against you and so on? Um so that, that is a question on the chat here. Well, yeah, uh, again, is the, you see, <clears throat> the, the, the issue here is not semantics of words. The issue is you are standing there against a, a, a man who has been trained and mind conditioned a certain way to extort your energy or possibly end your life. So under that, there is only one uh, prudent course of action, and that's remember that anything you do or say, you are under duress, threat, and intimidation, because that man, regardless of the funny symbol on his uh, shirt of, of fiction that he may represent, nonetheless still has a deadly weapon uh, and and can, at the stroke of whatever, exercise a a greater uh, amount of pressure of extortion and intimidation. So just any interaction whatsoever with any officer uh, who is armed is under threat, duress, and intimidation. Uh, The issue of right to be silent is a sneaky, sneaky trick, and how that works is this. <clears throat> Let's run through that. You have the right to remain silent. Okay, so 
basically an offer was made to you. 